All right, hello, it's Stephen Sadler reading to you from my book, Money and Power, The Secret History. And I'm going to segue out of politics a little more and get into the oil business itself. And I used to be an oil economist, but I should tell you, uh, to begin with, I'm going to be using the, uh, the CIA World Fact Book, which you can get it's in most libraries, it to, for these figures on world oil production and world oil proven reserves. Those are the two things that we want to know. Right now in the world, when you look at how much is being extracted out of the earth, Russians take the first place with over 9 billion barrels a day. Uh, Saudi Arabia comes second. The United States is third, followed by Iran, China, Canada, Mexico. Europe, which actually draws its oil from Eastern Europe. And Iraq, would be number eight then, Norway, and the United Arab Emirates. If you look at the, the Arab League, it produces 26 billion barrels a day. So that's about 31% of the oil produced in the world that's coming out of the Middle East. Kuwait would come in as the 11th largest producer of oil in the world. It's basically one big oil field, and uh, they produce about uh, 2 billion barrels a day too. Now, when you look at proven oil reserves, so one is how much are we extracting? Like right today, where can I go to get a supply of oil is one question. The other question we need to ask is well, where are we going to find some in the future? We've reached peak oil, many uh, people believe, which means even though our demand is increasing, the supply is decreasing. So finding more oil is becoming increasingly more important. And to date, as best we can tell, because not all countries or companies report all data accurately, but according to the World Factbook, again, number one is Saudi Arabia. They have about 20% of the world's known proven oil reserves. Canada is number second, or number two at second, at 13%. But a lot of its oil is in tar sands, which means you have to create heat or some other extraction me method that can be expensive. And so it's costly. It's not... It's not a convenient source for us. Third uh, largest reserves are in Iran. They have about 11% of the world's reserves. Iraq comes in number four at 10%. Kuwait is number five. They have 8%, almost 9%. Uh, Venezuela has 7%. United Arab Emirates has 7%. Russia has about four and a half percent. Libya, three and a quarter percent. So you see how Libya becomes a more important country now that the reserves are shrinking. And so there's a lot of political action occurring in Libya. Number 10 is Nigeria with about two and a half percent of the world's reserves. Uh, Kazakhstan has about 2%, so that's one of the former Soviet satellites, kind of north of Afghanistan. Part of the reason we need to be in Afghanistan to have control over these new oil-producing centers. Uh, number 12 is Qatar, that's 1%. United States is 13th. It only has 1.5%. Uh, China's 14 with about 1%, and Algeria has almost 1%. But listen to this, so if you were to add the Middle Eastern states of Saudi Arabia... Iran and Iraq, Kuwait, United Arab Emirates, and Qatar, that amounts to 58.57% of the known oil reserves of the world. Almost 60% of the oil reserves that we're going to be depending on are in the Middle East. And that's why it's so important we focus on the politics and the economics and what's really going on there. 